Okay folks, so I'm sitting here on the uh, the smoker, or actually the trailer, or the work surface of the uh, smoker, and it's all finished. And uh, you know, and when I left off I was uh, painting on the trailer and still had the undercarriage of the smoker itself to get painted yet. I also still had to get the uh, work surface, the work stand, uh, painted and uh, but I left off because I didn't want to I didn't want to ruin all the surprise before you know the grand the grand finale so to speak so here I am I got a lot of things that I want to cover I got, a lot, I got some things I want to show you that um, that I really like that I did with this build and a couple things that I would do differently if I started all over again um, you know kind of learn as you go when you haven't ever done something um, but I will take you around and uh, show you where we're at uh, it is totally finished now and uh, so I, you know I'm kind of glad and at the same time uh, it's kind of um, uh, I kind of enjoyed making this uh, this project and uh, so in that regard I'm kind of sad to see it go because uh, uh, you know I, I'm a person that likes projects and this has been quite a project to say the least if you only knew the hours that I've spent working on this uh, uh, this uh, project in fact uh, you know this last video that turned out to be I think 52 minutes the one prior to this the, uh, the saga, saga continues eight well I had eight I had five hours worth of uh, video that I cut down into those 52 53 minutes I think it was and so um, you know it's been uh, quite a project and you know prior to that I didn't uh, I didn't do working videos to hold just the last couple and that was simply because I didn't have a tripod or a proper uh, video camera I w it was all done on my uh, Nokia uh, icon uh, uh, yeah smartphone which has a very good camera in it and so um, as far as it being a workable camera, it worked just fine. Um, so, but at any rate, I'm here, and I want to kind of take you around and show you where things have gone to, and in in the final, and um, I hope you enjoy. Okay, guys, I hope you can see this, um, but I did actually uh, paint the uh, undercarriage of the smoker here. And uh, I even went up underneath the up underneath the trailer, fat boy that I am. I went up underneath the trailer and uh, painted the bottom of all this with the brush, even the black part. Um, so there you go. It finally, camera kind of adjusted. And you know, I did all this with a brush, and it looks really nice, actually. Um, it's very difficult to tell the you know any brush marks or anything on this black. Also, if you recall, I had some overspray right here on these welds here and over here on the the uh, smoker box. And um, go the other way with it. So we got it looking nice and pretty there. Um, I also went ahead and painted the smoker box while I was at it. Um, or smoker box, I should say fire box. Let's go out. Okay, so there we go. I think it looks really good. Um, and I'm, you know, I'm really ecstatic. For the most part, I'm totally ecstatic with the way things have turned out here. So, let me go up here. We're going to start, kind of do the tour of where I started with this smoker. Um, if you've been watching, you recall the first thing I did was to uh, cut open this tank, it's a 275 gallon fuel oil tank that 
was in pretty bad rusty condition. In fact, it actually had a rust hole over here on this side and you can still see a little bit of where I had to repair the rust hole where it had water inside the tank. I actually got this tank out of uh, my next door neighbor's woods um, and then uh, so I did you know that repair work on it and then uh, let's see so I cut open first thing I did was cut open the, uh, the doors uh, once I got the top uh, line cut across then I went ahead and did my hinges uh, as soon as I made kind of an L cut up here to get around the corner and put the uh, the eighth inch eighth by inch and a half um, flat steel across there then I went ahead and did my hinges then I went ahead and cut the rest of the door out um, after I did that then I did the front doors and when I cut out once I cut these out then you may recall right inside the door here um, now the front the actual face is the part of the tank still but right behind that I put a uh, C channel behind there uh, and so that was to stiffen that was to give this uh, support back here because this is only you know I'm guessing uh, probably at the best eighth inch thick steel this tank it's very th it's actually thinner actually it's thinner than eighth inch um, so you know this thing would have just flexed when, and it did until I put that until I added the uh, until I added the C-channel there for stiffness. Now I got this basic idea from a videos from a guy that uh, here on YouTube and his channel is named Rob's Shop and uh, his, his smoker is kind of similar to this one um, but I'll let you folks go over there and look at it and that was one of the improvements that I thought I could make on this was the addition of this uh, uh, strap across here and then to stiffen it was to put the C channel because his does not have that. Now then, I've got four nice big racks in here and after I got the doors uh, cut and open, uh, made and oh by the way on the doors one thing that I wish that I had uh, done a little differently and this is on all of them this is mm, ha a three quarter inch I think it is box that that I got or half inch um, I can't recall I think it's half inch actually and then if you go back and look I think maybe the first or second video I think I tell you and then this is three eighths inch uh, round uh, round bar is what they call it and what I wish I had done, I wish I had gone with the, I wish I had gone with the uh, three-quarter inch uh, steel tubing, and used the half-inch round bar instead of the three-eighths. It just would have been a little bit more sturdy. Um, so that's that's one. Of, that's probably the biggest thing that I wish I had done differently. Um, so also, so I got these racks, and first thing I did was to I don't know if I can get it to where you can see it. Maybe on this side with the sun. There you go. I made the uh, the racks in here, and you can see that probably on the third or fourth video where I made the racks for the inside of the uh, tank here for all three or all four of the or the rack. I should say the slides for the racks. Um, let's see now this is uh, three-quarter inch uh, square tubing that's what I made these frames out of and then it's uh, um, three-quarter inch uh, flattened steel um, that uh, flattened uh, yeah expanded metal 
that I've made these uh, rack tops out of. And each one of these does slide out and gives me a ton of space on these. And as of yet, I haven't had opportunity to even come close to filling this thing up yet. But I'm hoping the day comes, the sooner the better. Um, and so then the fourth one, you know, these come way back out. And, in fact, I'm going to go get some frozen, frozen uh, some ribs out here and lay them on there just so you can see how much space a rack of ribs takes up on one of these one of these uh, grates. Now um, there's actually two ribs, that, two sets of ribs in that package offset kinda and let me see if I pull it up here and and uh, I really tried I can probably get another set another rack back behind going lengthwise there but you can see how much space I've got on here and we're gonna guess one two so I'm guessing six per now these are full these are full short root short ribs including the rib tips that are still on there so I'm guessing all together I can get nine racks of ribs per um, per each of these three crates. If I had to, that'd be 27. Then I could probably do another six across the top, which would be 33 racks of ribs all at the same time if I was doing them flat, laying them flat. Um, so, you know, there's a ton of room in this smoker, which is exactly what I want. Actuality, often I'll probably do uh, chickens on the top, then ribs, and then uh, maybe some uh, ribs and pork butts down here at the bottom. Uh, now here in Indiana, and actually in the Midwest in general, um, I told you these, um, Spare ribs have the tips still on them, and here in Indiana, tips, rib tips, are actually a marketable uh, commodity as far as uh, barbecue is concerned. And uh, lots of folks would rather have the rib tips than the uh, the ribs, and they sell very well around here. I'll be right back. Hang on a second. Alright guys, now we're looking in the bottom of the smoker here. And what I made was, um, in this particular smoker, I made adjustable um, tuning plates in the reverse flow smoker. Now then, the first tuning plate here is actually welded in place. And it is welded approximately, if I recall right, half inch, three quarter inch, something like that, uh, above the level of the second two tuning plates here. And I did that because this uh, 275 gallon tank is pretty big and I wanted to make sure that I was always going to get smoke down here in the lower corner of this smoker. And so that's the reason why I left this gap here. And of course there's the opening right there into the stack. Um, now and these two tuning plates here, I can, uh, I can pick them up and reverse them. You know, they're, they are actually on a shelf on the front and the back. There, there's another shelf over here on this side. Um, just like the one on the back there. And I can slide them back and forth. Uh, I can close it all off and make all the smoke come down here to the end if I want. Um, 
however I want to do it. Um, one advantage is one advantage to having a kind of a dead spot down here in the corner is to allow me to have things that are getting close to done kind of maybe move it over here however you're right above the fire firebox there and that's where the heat's coming in so um, so those are adjustable and I can uh, you know play with them as I want however for the most part I have found that close to where they're at right now is where I like to keep it that helps me to ensure that I'm getting even heat and, and and even smoke throughout the smoker here okay um, one thing that you'll notice the right here is where I've added some silicone high temperature silicone and it is safe for food to use silicone to seal these once they're dry once it's dry uh, when they're drying they do put off a, a gas but um, I wouldn't want to cook on it while I got silicone drying anyhow. Um, so I did that and again this is because this uh, steel on this tank is very thin and when you go to welding on it uh, and putting heat into it you are going to warp it and now I bent it back around as close as I could get it to sealing as you know perfectly as I could and even even still I still get a little bit of leakage, but I'm not worried about that. My food doesn't know that there's a little bit of leakage around these doors. Um, it works just fine. Um, let's see here. So, after we did this, then, or I did this, then the next thing was to put the stack on the back of it. And we'll see if we can't get a picture. Now, and I made this box. I was originally going to just use the round pipe and do a 90 degree bend out of the uh, back of the smoker with the round pipe and then it, it, I, I didn't know how I was going to hold it up there um, in place to to weld it and so I came up with this idea to build this box underneath it and I could just uh, stand the pipe straight up off the top of it and get it where I wanted it and so that worked real well um, that is uh, um, six inch pipe and it's like schedule 40 and it is uh, a heavy thing so there's that now then, let me show you uh, something of my own design here now then, no, nowhere on a smoker have I ever seen a contraption like this that I made and designed um, and that is a, this is my opening and closing mechanism for the damper or the cap on top of the stack here. And when I pull it all the way this way, that's all the way closed. And when I push it, obviously, that's all the way open. Um, so let me get around on the outside and see if we can get a picture there. Now it's a little bit on the difficult side because when I open it, it actually pulls the uh, damper or the cap towards the front of the smoker. And so you can see it, but uh, all you're seeing is the open top of the, of the, of the uh, stack there. And so uh, maybe you can see a little bit over here to the right side, but there it is. So I went with this design because I kind of knew that this thing was going to be high enough up off, off, uh, up off the ground once I put it on a trailer that um, it was going to be very difficult to open and close that stack. Plus I also knew that I was probably not going to be able to open the, the stack from the front of the, tra uh, the, front of the smoker. And would have to get uh, off the trailer and go around off on the ground and go around and open and close the smoker, uh, the, the open and close the um, um, damper or, or uh, cap, out here, whatever you want to call it, um, in order to adjust it. So I thought, got to thinking to myself, there's got to be an easier way, and this is what I came up with. 
and if you go back looking in the videos you can find it now then next thing I did with this smoker was to add the carriage underneath the uh, tank there and so I manufactured that and I've been asked uh, before why did I go with the hang iron on the top and the reason why was because I could adjust the smoker up and down as I was uh, attaching the uh, attaching the uh, carry undercarriage to that now and the other reason is because uh, the mounts there were originally it was designed for black pipe to be screwed into those there that they're kind of bent and uh, I couldn't I couldn't um, ensure that they were all going to work if I had carried them straight on up and I didn't want to risk it but I was able to put a bolt through each one of them and you'll see that let's see if I can get a there you go, you can see where I put the bolt through there. So I put a bolt through and then went to the next one and put a bolt through and then I could adjust, I mean I could adjust as I was going along off of off the initial bolt. Now those, uh, there's really not a nut on those I don't recall, I don't think if I recall correctly, but they're welded in place so they're not going anywhere. Um, so, so I built the carriage and then the next thing I did was to build this um, in actuality I, I'm backwards a little bit here because I actually built the and put the uh, firebox on this before I put the stack on it. Um, now, so um, here's another thing that I wish I'd have done maybe a little different although as to this point it's not causing me any problems this firebox is actually made out of um, eighth inch steel and uh, so far it's holding up very well and as is my uh, rack here that I've been using for the fire and uh, there you go. Now, and I went to a uh, smoker calculator. Have to figure out that hole, and that hole there is what's known as the throat between the uh, firebox and the smoke chamber. And uh, determine exactly how how many cubic inches or square inches that opening needed to be. It also helped me to calculate exactly how big the um, um, firebox needs to be in relation and all this is in relation to how big your cook chamber is. It also tell, helps you convert, uh, also tells you uh, based upon that how big the stack has to be and what, what height it should be based upon the diameter of the pipe you're using. So, I'll link to that and uh, let you have a look at it. Uh, so, now I, so I, was tell, I, I, I went ahead and, uh, you know, there's my opening. It also, there's another, that's another part of the calculator helps you figure out, which is the opening, how much opening you need for air, uh, uh, combustion air to go in uh, for, to feed your fire with. All right. So then, uh, that's what, that's what, after this, after I did this, that was when I put on the uh, on the uh, stack. So over here, uh, we've got the same exact style hinges that I made on the front doors. And again, I w this is in particular the one that I wish that I had um, put a little heavier hinges on here because I did come across a situation 
where this door had actually sunk down on the hinges. And I solved it just by lifting up on them a little, lifting up on the door a little bit, and getting it, getting them back in place. So let's see. So the next thing, at that point, the smoker was done, and now it. This build has just kind of morphed along the way as I was going. Now, the trailer here, for instance, um, came from Harbor Freight, and it has a load capacity of 1,720 pounds, I think it is, and a, and a gross vehicle weight, which I'll just take you over here and show you. Here's our data tag on it. Let's see if we can get in, hold in to where you can see it. So it has a, a gross vehicle weight of 1920, or 1980, I'm sorry, and a, uh, and a capacity of 1720, if I'm correct, I had to go, I'm virtually certain that's correct. So I had one of my followers uh, worried that my smoker was going to be too heavy for the trailer. Well, once I got the the very day that I got it roadworthy, I took it over to the scrap metal yard and had them put it on their scale. And the gross vehicle weight of this uh, entire build is uh, 1,520 pounds. So I've got like, as far as the gross vehicle weight is concerned, I've got like 460 pounds um, to play with. Now I am. Uh, so, um, with the help of my neighbor a couple houses down, uh, well, let me think about it. Well, the neighbor a couple houses down helped me to get the tank and up onto the uh, up onto the cradle or the uh, carriage there. And then my next door neighbor and uh, his buddy helped me to get the, uh, the smoker uh, slid onto the trailer from the rear. Um, and so that's how that worked. It took three of us to get it all slid on there. Then, uh, then I went about um, determining how I was going to uh, hold the smoker down. And originally I was going to bolt it down and make it removable so it could come back off of the trailer. And I eventually, um, my brain, I guess, maybe won out and I determined that I better go ahead and weld it down because you know I'd really hate for this smoker somehow to come off this trailer while I'm cruising down the road and um, causing some serious problems so I went ahead and I as you can see right there maybe Let's see if I can get it there you go, you can see it's welded there, welded across there, and the same on the other side. It's also welded um, on the front. So if I can get a picture here, I'll get it in a minute. I can't see it from here. Anyway, it is welded onto the front of the, the, front of the trailer too. Um, let's see. Excuse me while I close my doors here. Oh yeah, speaking of the doors. One thing that I might have done differently, differently would have been to lower these two handles just a little bit because I actually do, when I go to open these doors, I actually have to lift that top door just that that much to allow them to swing um, now then, these uh, spring handles they come from uh, Century Spring Company and I like them but 
I had to buy uh, I had to buy fifty dollars worth of spring handles, um, which it turns out to be quite a few spring handles. So, but I have a, I have a uh, I have a use for some of them, um, and so I'm gonna go ahead and uh, I, I'm, I'll make some videos of that here shortly too. Um, now, and as far as the uh, as far as the uh, thermometers go, those are uh, simply mounted. I took uh, those are half inch uh, black pipe couplings, which I have. Um, welded into the uh, tank here and that's how that was done um, let's see what else so yes the other the other coupling up underneath here in the bottom of the smoker you see this uh, come on focus there you go that is a one inch um, black pipe coupling with a piece of rebar that I welded to the side and put a hook on it in just a second there you go that is my grease drain and that's to prevent the grease from traveling back into the fire pit the firebox there and creating a grease fire instead of a wood fire so there you go that's the purpose of that um, and one way or another you gotta keep your grease, try to keep your grease into the cook pit and cook fire, uh, yeah, cook chamber or else you've gotta let it drain out the bottom. Now I'll tell you, depending on the meat, you can get a ton of uh, oil, uh, grease coming out of there. And so um, trying to contain it inside the cook chamber may not be the best uh, solution for you. Okay, so at any rate, after we did the trailer, <laughs> after the trailer was built and I'd uh, got the uh, smoker mounted on it, that's when I had the great disaster occur. And that was when I had to uh, replace the tongue on the trailer. And so I, not only did I replace it, I also beefed it up and extended it further out because the the further out it goes, the easier it is to back the trailer. And that is a one ton um, jack that I added on there. And uh, so there we go. Now, and the next thing we did was to build, I did, so I do have a mouse in my pocket just so you know, was to build the work platform here. And the work platform is uh, uh, sturdy enough that I can have. I've had a couple, two or three people up there all, all at the same time. Um, and so, you know, there's really not a lot to tell about it other than the fact that I got these adjusted, I made these legs adjustable so that I, you know, depending on what ground I'm on, you know, you, you can't always say that your smoker is going to be on nice level ground and so uh, like it is right now this leg is extended uh, a couple holes I think it is further than the one over here and that's simply to that's simply because this driveway that it's sitting on is not level uh, it tilts uh, to the right and it also tilts towards us as we're looking at it um, and so it's got to account for that. Now if I raise this too high um, then the uh, two, two, two end tables um, will hit on the doors when they open. I also got to be careful that I don't have a beer or something sitting on this end table when I swing the door open because that thing will uh, like knock it off <laughs> uh, when it opens fully. This one over here is pretty safe condition uh, because of the distance from the uh, back of the smoker to the table there. Whereas this one here actually is not quite to the end of the of the uh, smoker there. 
And I suppose I could have done differently if I'd uh, if I had extended out the um, the uh, work stand here a little further. But they were actually kind of an afterthought when I got to thinking that maybe I wanted a guardrail on each end of this platform. So in case I wasn't paying attention to what I was doing, I would have something there to bump up against uh, and not fall off the edge of the uh, work platform. So the, the main purpose of these, other than being a table, was to actually have a guardrail. And then once I went from guardrail, then I made the jump to end tables. So that's how that happened. Uh, this uh, whole thing kind of morphed along the way because when I uh, started this and even when I finished the smoker um, Harbor Freight was not here in town and so uh, I didn't really any know anything about Harbor Freight trailers and then uh, they moved to town and I signed up for their you know emails and whatnot and then I started seeing these uh, trailers and whatnot and then I you know measured the smoker and I said you know uh, you know this trailer here is uh, for all intents and purposes a one-ton uh, trailer a trailer capable of carrying about three quarters of a ton of capacity and uh, in my head I thought I was right and turned out I was right as far as its ability to carry this smoker and like I told you before I've got 460 pounds that I could play with so if I ever decide that I want to beef up this firebox and uh, you know cut it I'll cut this one off and uh, beef it up with uh, maybe 3 16 uh, steel I suppose I could do that I really wouldn't be looking forward to it, but I suppose I could do it. <laughs> um, and, you know, if it gets damaged enough, uh, you know, the heat warps it or whatever, I suppose it can be done. So we'll just get to that when I get there. So then after that, the next, uh, whoops, the next project, I began to think about uh, putting something over the smoker so that in the pouring down rain or whatever and I'm out here trying to work on it maybe I wouldn't want to get wet and so I thought about how my how can I put a covering on top of this uh, smoker and this was the idea that I kind of came up with um, now I went you can see up here I had these uh, ribs you see how they're uh, curved. I went to the steel yard and they do ornamental iron work and stuff like that and they were able to bend them for me. Now they did not bend real great. I mean they, they bent in the direction I wanted which was this way but they're also kind of curved off to the sides a little bit um, and that made things a little more difficult and I'll show you how, what I'm talking about here in a little bit. Um, so I built these two frames and then uh, if you watch the, my most recent videos you'll see where I built the uh, framing you know to go you see there I went around the around the firebox and allowed it to have an opening there on the end and then uh, so uh, now then these two pieces of aluminum up here on the top on the top are uh, bare aluminum. I did not paint those um, simply because nobody can really see them unless I'm in the folded up travel position and so you know it's a lot it seemed like a waste of time and paint and money and so I also because in the summertime when most of the smoking is going to be done it's going to be hot and silver aluminum is reflective and that helps reflect some of that heat back away from me rather than draw it in so I also put um, three sides on this 
Now this is something new you guys have not seen yet unless you caught a couple glimpses of it. I, I think when I was uh, uh, recording here I uh, caught a couple uh, spots of the uh, color. Um, so I, I, I was wondering if maybe anybody guessed along the way because I've got a red trailer and I made a white um, framing there and then so the obvious choice for the siding was navy blue and so you see on this siding that I decided because screws are cheap I did go ahead and go with four inches on center on each one of these screws up and down and um, so it's built good and sturdy now one thing that changed after I, if you watched that last video, when I welded these two tabs on here, the, uh, I had to cut the aluminum out around that so that, uh, so I could uh, have the tab there. So that was something that kind of uh, changed as I went along there. Hey, you just gotta be flexible sometimes. Um, let's see, so, now in back here, nothing much to see, I didn't add any, uh, I didn't add any expanded metal or anything back there because there's no way to walk on this thing. Uh, one thing that I have, I think, succeeded in doing is to keep this to where it is possible to remove this whole framing assembly and get in there and so I'm supposing at some point down the line I'm going to need to repaint the smoker and maybe who knows repaint the trailer again too. Um, I like to keep it looking pretty nice. Now then, uh, one thing that uh, you'll see up there if you look real close while I did cut that out real nice. Um, I can get a little closer there. You can see, I, now I've had this out on the road a few times, and I did cut it apparently a little too close on the, on the, the sides, and uh, it has bent itself out um, as the trailer has, I guess, gone around corners or whatever, and uh, widened, you know, widened it out there. Uh, apparently needs it and part of that is because this uh, framing is held on by these two bolts on the end and that uh, strap there that goes across from end to end and if you remember uh, I had these little I built these little shelves for this to rest on Let's see if we can now then, they actually will, between here on the corner and that bolt, it actually does flex a little bit. Um, it'll go up an inch or so and then come back down again. And so the, uh, the uh, trade-off to that was the, you see the bent aluminum up there on the top. And so, um, other than that, there has been no real repercussions from doing this the way that I've done it. But I do want to have it uh, to where I can remove this frame. And that was the best idea I could come up with, with possibility. There's another possibility that I could weld, a, I could uh, bolt on a couple of uh, tabs through the frame that would spin around and come over and cover the uh, quarter inch by two um, flat steel that I've got there. And that might solve that problem. And so that may happen yet. Uh, we'll see. So here's the back side. And again, we're four inches on center all the way around on all these screws and just so you if you watched that last video 
You see how nice and flush those screws are? Unlike a hex head screw, which they also do have Torx screws, or Torque, or I'm sorry, Tech screws, Tech, T-E-K, screws with the um, hex heads on them that are primarily used for like uh, pole barns and stuff like that. And a lot of times they'll have like a rubber washer under them. You can find them in your big box store. They were right there with, uh, right there with these. Um, but I wanted these flat so that if I'm, I or anybody else is walking by, that you know they don't snag themselves on those tech screws. And so, and so the same is over here. Now then, once I'm a rip roaring success in the barbecue business, I think there's a good chance that I may end up uh, taking and having a truck wrap made for these three sides, uh, advertising the business. And so, there we go. Now then, uh, so last but not least, here we are, back to the tables. And I will try to put this on to the tripod here, and we'll come back to these tables. Okay guys, so if you've been watching, you know that these can be removed very easily, just like that. And put this off to the side. Get this one off. Pull my pin here. Before I take off with this every time, or I'll lose things like that. Okay, so somehow that pin went all the way up underneath there. So. up, put down, I should say put up, take down, <laughs> I'll get it right here in a minute. So there it is, uh, that's the complete build. 
Okay guys, so I've got a few people I want to give a shout out to. That I'm going to scroll here through the end. And like I say, this is the end of the Great Smoker build. It's not the end of my channel, but it is the end of the Great Smoker build. Uh, I may convert my uh, channel, my YouTube channel here to a cooking channel. Or as I said in my last video, I have an idea for another trailer that would kind of be an extension of this. So, what's the plan with this uh, smoker? Well, my current plan is that I'm looking, some, I'm looking for somewhere that I can uh, set up specifically on the weekends right now, uh, Fridays and Sat Friday nights and Saturdays, where I can uh, just be a street vendor. And so that's what I'm that's what I'm up to. Um, so I want to thank you, folks greatly for the people that have followed me and watched all my videos. Um, I hope you've learned something. I hope I've been worth watching. Um, I know I'm just a some uh, uh, 56 year old fat boy out here, but uh, if I can do it, you can do it. So thank you greatly for watching and uh, stay tuned. There's more to come.